Thanks for the opportunity to speak today. How do I advance it? So I'm gonna talk about uh, tibia perineal occlusions. And so first of all, why is revascularization of tibia perineal occlusions important? We usually uh, discuss this in the context of uh, critical limb ischemia, which portends a high rate of amputation and mortality. And it turns out, as I'll show you, most patients with critical limb ischemia have a tibia perineal occlusion. And even revascularizing a, a specific tibia perineal vessel in the angiosome of interest may have some clinical benefit. The Tamiris trial maybe provides the best natural history of uh, critical limb ischemia. It was a gene therapy trial in patients with CLI who were thought not to have a revascularization option. And it, it was a negative trial, but at 12 months, both groups, the gene therapy group and the placebo group, had amputation rates approaching 25%. Uh, 25%. And similarly, in the basal trial, which is a randomized trial of angioplasty versus bypass, at five years in this negative trial, uh, amputation-free mortality was around 50%. So, so bad outcomes in CLI patients. What's their anatomy? Um, this was a uh, retrospective uh, cohort study at two academic institutions. It looked at 450 patients who had critical limb ischemia and underwent angiography. 91% of these patients had a popliteal or tibia perineal occlusion. So patients with CLI almost always have a below knee occlusion. We um, increasingly, I believe, think about the angiosomes in the foot and the leg. Uh, if we want to perhaps revascularize an artery in the angiosome of a wound if possible. This is a little bit different than perhaps 10, 20, 30 years ago when it was thought maybe just one below knee vessel uh, was enough. Um, are the outcomes really better with an angiosome um, related concept? And this is a difficult thing to study, but at least in this retrospective observational study of over 700 patients, um, the patients who got angiosome related revascularization did better than those who did not. So to summarize so far, uh, CLI is associated with poor outcomes. Tibia perineal occlusions are very prevalent in patients with critical limb ischemia, and perhaps revascular, uh, revascularizing specific tibia perineal uh, vessels have clinical benefit. So what? So just uh, you know, fix the arteries. Well, it, it can be challenging to revascularize below knee vessels. It often requires non-traditional access, if, as we've already seen. Uh, crossing these uh, occlusions can be difficult and it requires managing the subintimal space. Um, as mentioned, we don't really have dedicated below knee drug coated devices like are available in the femoral popliteal segments, and hemostasis of these uh, non traditional access sites can be challenging. So, to focus on uh, the crossing step, which is usually the hardest step in revascularizing a below knee occlusion, um, why is it so hard to cross? Well, the occlusions are often very long. They're often very calcified, and even the best operators are gonna find that they're subintimal, and you have to be able to manage that subintimal space and reenter in the true lumen. And um, industry has responded with multiple devices um, to, this, uh, to this end. There's a handful of crossing devices. There's, uh, BARD has a crosser system. It uses radio frequency energy to cross occlusions. A approval study, the Patriot study, involved 85 patients. 16% of these 85 patients actually had tibia perineal disease. The Avenger system is very exciting. I mean, it uses a rotating catheter, OCT guidance. It's been studied in Connect 1 and Connect 2, but has almost exclusively involved femoral popliteal disease, not below knee disease. The TruePath is a crossing device for Boston Scientific. It uses an 018 diamond coated wire that can rotate at 13,000 um, RPM. Its approval study also involved 85 patients, but only 13% had tibial occlusions. And finally, barred from the coronary um, circulation, Covidian has the Viance on tier platform, which is really a planned dissection reentry uh, technique with a manual rotating catheter that prepares the subintimal space for a flat balloon that can direct a wire to the um, true lumen of the vessel. We actually, um, eight years ago, published one of these, uh, the first um, reports of using this technology in revascularizing and uh, below knee vessel. Um, on the left, the two white arrows point to the fluoroscopic markers on the um, balloon that orients the wire 
towards the true lumen of the vessel. The limitations of, the cro of these crossing devices is that there's sparse data. It's mostly femoral popliteal occlusions. They're a little bit expensive. There's a learning curve and there's reasonable alternatives. And they don't really replace just good techniques. And one technique that I find very helpful is super selective imaging is very useful in revascularizing below knee occlusions. Often the occlusion is much shorter than you think when you have a catheter as deep into the arterial bed as possible, both retrograde and integrade. This was the case I was struggling retrograde from the perineal to cross. I didn't know where my wire was, it was getting in collaterals, but a super selective injection retrograde identified a patent infrapopliteal artery, uh, below knee popliteal artery, and uh, allowed us to cross successfully. Operators um, treating uh, below knee occlusions have to be good at the subintimal space. In, in my mind, I want to keep the subintimal space as small as possible for as long as possible. I want to keep the subintimal space as short as possible. And you have to be familiar with reentry devices and techniques to reenter the true lumen. There's a handful of reentry devices. Um, they have a variety of mechanisms. Um, none of them are necessarily dedicated for below knee um, circulation. Reentry devices have some theoretical advantages. Perhaps they save some uh, procedural time. Perhaps they increase procedural success. But I think there could be some disadvantages also. They may be more disruptive for the subintimal space. They may, may be difficult to deliver to the reentry site, and they're expensive. There's also alternatives. You can use alternative access, has been mentioned. There's a variety of wires and catheters that operators um, can be familiar with. And there's um, several techniques that help manage the subintimal space. Alternative access, um, there's multiple um, options. As we've discussed, it gives you more support. It may be actually easier to cross the occlusion retrograde than integrate. It may keep the subintimal space shorter. I would also suggest that we can use collaterals for retrograde access, and we can also use the plantar loop. So this was the case with a patient with a heel wound. We actually came around the anterior tibial, dorsalis pedis, and the plantar arch retrograde to um, revascularize the plantar loop. Okay. Using a cart or safari to reconcile subintimal spaces, both integrate and retrograde uh, directions are important in treating tibial perineal occlusions. And finally, um, I'll finish up with uh, thinking about the future. I think classifying tibial perineal disease is uh, very important. We need more data. We need to be able to be on the same page. Um, TASC has expanded their classification and involved tibia perineal disease. Um, uh, Manesh Patel and Skylar Jones at Duke have come up with a runoff score that predicts outcomes. And maybe we need a endovascular specific uh, classification. So this is a very simple uh, classification, one, two, and three. Three involves the popliteal artery, one, and just involves a tibia perineal artery, it's not a flush occlusion. And I find this kind of classification useful in my practice. So if it's a type one occlusion, I feel like I can cross antegrade, treat antegrade. If it's a type two occlusion, I have a lower threshold to go retrograde. It's a flush occlusion of, at the ostium of the tibia perineal artery. A type three occlusion involving the popliteal, I'm very quick to go retrograde, and then I'm gonna externalize and treat antegrade. And of course, this is very simple. There's many other var variables that need to be considered if we're gonna develop a uh, comprehensive algorithm. So I'll stop there. Thank you Thanks. very much.